Hi guys, it's Aish. Um, just before the podcast begins, I just want to quickly say that I'm doing, um, I'm hosting a Happy Birthday Cal. It's all about me for May and also all about me for June because I like to celebrate for two months. Anyway, I'm hosting um, a Happy Birthday Cal or an Aisha's Birthday Cal or whatever I end up calling it, but it's, um, I've already put it on can't even remember what it is, but I already put it on um, Ravelry, and I just want to say that please join in. Um, I want to see and be enabled by all of you. Um, the rules are pretty easy. It's all up on Ravelry. Basically, post one whip per project per week, or and then one photo for your whip foe you can put whips and foes in. Um, feel free to chatter. All whips and foes will be eligible for. Um, a prize and the prizes will be um, a couple of bags donated by Knit and Stitch Bits and also Crochet One Knit Two both on Etsy and also some yarn that I'll be donating as well so yeah on with the show hi guys it's Aish here again welcome back to my channel it's been a long time hasn't it I know it's been a while but as you remember I had a pinched nerve in my neck as well as a bulging disc so I wasn't really knitting um, but I did learn to knit like in short spurts and um, then on Easter Sunday I somebody hit my car I was basically t-boned and um, I did have a passenger thankfully because they hit from the passenger side um, but I sprained my fingers obviously because I was holding too tight onto the steering wheel so everything that I was taught in defense driving class I obviously ignored and I was holding the steering wheel like this and obviously again I thought I was cruising because I sprained this finger the most and this thumb this thumb is still and fingers still hurt the other hand um, fingers were also a bit sprained and swollen but they've recovered but yeah I still feel a bit of pain in my finger and my thumb and then yeah so that's what's been going on I has there been anything significant there probably has and I've forgotten everything um, also I went to the wool gathering retreat on the weekend so I'm going to talk about that so how this is going to work today is show you my finishes um, most of my whips I won't be going through the modular um, projects and then um, some stash enhancement and then um, just a wrap up of the wool gathering um, retreat I thought that would be a good idea for those of you who are um, from Australia and also from New Zealand because we did have some have a New Zealand visitor as well and we did have people coming from all over Australia to come to the retreat so that was quite awesome so I'll talk to talk about that at the end because a lot of you overseas people might not be interested in, in listening to a retreat that you might not be able to get your hands um, get yourself to okay whips no finishes so my first finish I actually don't have but I just want to show you because I loved how they turned out I always swore that I would never make socks for anybody other than myself and like my mum and my, my dad my sisters aren't interested in it but I made these socks and I ended up giving it to one of my friends for her birthday um, she's probably the only other person that I would make socks for and I love how they turned out so how gorgeous are they the pattern is the uh, the pattern is the Grello Love Socks by Claire Devine and um, yeah I just loved them I love this different heel which is a Flegal heel and I'm currently obsessed with them the yarn is the purple is I think vibrant violet vibrant violet um, stroll knit picks and the yarn itself is Fiesta Love by um, Jinx Yarns but I love how they turned out I'm almost jealous because I don't think I have any more of this yarn left so we'll see we'll see I've got some pretty small feet so I might be able to get some socks out of the leftovers the next thing is another pair of socks Ta-da! these are probably the longest socks I've ever made for myself um, these are my basic recipe which is toe up Turkish cast on um, fish lips kiss heel and just a Russian bind off these socks are weird the reason why they're weird is I made them with Peyton's Croy um, the yarn is 
sporty stripes. I love the colours on them. But the reason why they're weird is this is listed as a fingering, but this is like a light decay. Like I think I could even knit these on a three millimeter and still get a reasonably tight knit, like a fabric that I like. You guys know that I um, knit my fingering socks on 1.75, so I think I knit these in 2.25 or 2.5, and I think that I, if I knit them in three three millimeter, I would still be happy with the yarn. So really bizarre so I used two balls of yarn for this because I had two balls and um, yeah I didn't worry about matching colors as you can see I, n I never do worry about matching stripes it's it doesn't really matter to me at all and I dropped it so we'll just leave it there and we'll go on to the next finish um, another finish I have is another pair of socks yes I know I love knitting socks these are my rainy day rainbow socks in the sense that the yarn is called rainy day rainbow the yarn is from fab funky fibers she was selling a half a skein so 50 um, meters and 50 meters is enough for me to make I mean 50 grams is enough for me to make um, a pair of socks when I use just some alternate toes and heels and yeah, so I really like the colorway on this one. This is the colorway there. Again, I just pulled out of the inside and outside of the ball because I do my socks two at a time. And um, where we were striping, I just, on the colors, I just decided to um, do garter stitch just for something different. And Russian bind off. And when I was binding off, I wanted to do it in a different color. So I think they came out really cool. So that's sock number three and then um, this isn't in any order so I'm just showing you my finishes I also have another pair of socks that I finished again this is a Grello Love sock pattern by Claire Devine I had one ball of Springleaf Patterns Croy socks um, yarn and so I made another pair of um, Grello Love socks um, so that's the flegal heel. So you've got the gusset here, and then you shape the heel there for the flap. I didn't have enough yarn for the whole sock because I was going a bit high. If I had bound off or created, I suppose if I had started the ribbing after I finished the heel, it would have been okay, but it wasn't enough. So I just used some yarn from again from knit picks yes my nail polish is disgusting but yeah so I have no idea I can't remember the color but that's how they are and every time a color changed that I just um, slip the stitch and knit it on the next round so that's how I did that and then I need another pair of socks there's a theme going. These socks I knit out of Patents UK Extra Fine DK Merino, the printed one. And these are here. I love, I love, love, love this colour. Don't you just love it? I had two balls of yarn, so I just knit them two at a time like I always do, Turkish cast on. Again with the flegal heel, I told you I'm obsessed with it. And then I just cast off when I felt like it. These were a really quick knit, obviously, because they're DK. But there are the colours there. And there you can see the gusset again and the flegal heel flap which is so much fun to do. The flegal heel is you just create the gusset and then um, you just do a series of short rows and it's so easy and you don't have to pick up. No kitchener, nothing. I love it. And that's why I continue to do it. And it's perfect for when you've got a high arch. So if you've got a high arch and you've tried and you want to do toe up, I recommend that you try a flegal heel. I loved it. So I love the stitch definition on these. These are like, look at that, it just looks so cool. Um, these are 100% merino, but I'm not particularly um, destructive on my socks, so these will be okay for me to wear and nice and warm and cosy during our winter here in Australia. And then 
I have another pair of socks. The last time you saw these socks, I was to here. So I think the other ones I had not even cast on last time you, um, I spoke to you. But these I was to here. So I had done the toe and I had a bit left of the heel, um, the foot to do before I did the heel. Again, these are Fab Funky Fibers socks. I love her stripes. This is the dark side of the moon colorway. I actually like this better than the mustache yarn um, version. I did alternate um, toes, heels and cuffs um, just because I wanted another I wanted 50 grams left over so I can make, knit, knit another pair. Um, yeah so just again a vanilla sock, uh, fish lips kiss heel. When I do the fish lips kiss heel I actually increase at about a centimeter before I'm going to put the heel in. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it maybe if I fold it you will yeah I think you will so look out look how thin the foot is and then slowly it starts to increase and you can see that I increase at the um, at the leg part too so that's the difference in size because I like a tight sock so I usually cast on 56 stitches and that sometimes can still be a bit loose for me I do I do knit on 1.75s um, but if I'm doing a fish lips, lips kiss heel I do have to increase so I increase usually about four stitches one um, about a centimeter before the toe start and then I do also add four stitches to or two stitches to the heel as well and then I just continue on um, putting them out. otherwise I won't be able to get my foot in so I'm loving them and I can take my little stitch marker off that oh I can't even remember who gave me that one but it's, it's just my Harry Potter scarf loving it so that's all my finishes I'm going to show you because I don't want to keep you here too long and let's get on to the whips so with my whips I, I, I did have sort of like a casting on party and I think I'm still going to have on a casting on party. So one of the first things that I cast on was a sock head hat. And I cast it on with, um, um, the, the sock head hat is, um, recommends that you knit on three millimeter needles. So I purchased a pair of those Addy lace, you know, the gold ones. And I was knitting with them and I just found that I couldn't actually knit neatly with them. The stitches weren't even, like they were, it was like as if somebody was learning how to knit. I kept on dropping stitches, like again, like they weren't even like that I'd have big loops. And I realized because I'm not used to knitting um, some uh, like a rib or a um, just stocking it in such a big gauge, you know, with, with three millimeter needles for fingering weight that um, the metal just wasn't working for me because it was too slippery. So I ended up buying some Addy, um, you know, the wooden ones. And now it's working fine. So I had knit up until where I could cast off for the brim. Um, sorry, where I could stop doing um, the rib. And um, so, I, yeah, I had to um, rip that all out and cast on again. I actually cast on during the wool gathering retreat and I cast on using 2.75 millimeter needles and now I'm knitting a three millimeter. The yarn I'm using is skein yarn in her top drawer sock and this is her philosopher base. Oh no, this is her glitter base. I can't remember that name of but oh, I love this. This is so opposite the colors that I would normally go for. This is to me this is like baby baby yarn because I like bright bold colors but I fell in love with this yarn and the skein as soon as I received it again I don't even know why I ordered it but love it I would love to make more stuff out of this so the socket hat is a free pattern I um, I have no notes so I haven't written down any of the designers unless I remember them um, so if you go on to my projects page on Ravelry so I am the sticky stitch on Ravelry and on Instagram um, you can just find all the information there otherwise if you're not on Ravelry please um, send me a message down below and I will give you further details so this is my sock here so this is the ribbing and this is how much I've knit I love how it's turning out it's not really pulling at all 
is just this beautiful just run of color and it you know and you know in certain lights you can see the glitter it's not like in your face glitter and I just love them it, it I love it I should say I just I just think it looks really really cool so I'm looking forward to wearing this because May is officially my birthday month because I was born um, at the end of May I almost forgot um, but um, I celebrate for a few months so um, yeah so I'll be talking about a knit along that I'm doing as well but that's one and that's it's just in a small baggy bag I don't know if you've ever seen these bags they're supposed to be for toiletries and all that sort of stuff so I just picked this up from Sunspun I just thought it was cute little stripes so I'm an 80s girl so but I have to have that okay the next pair of socks that I've got are my, are my Weasley Homestead socks in my book bag from Bling Your String and these yes another pair of socks I'm knitting them two at a time let's see if I've caught the ball band no because I never ever ever never seem to keep ball bands I'm a bad podcaster and these I think are knit on 2.25 millimeter because the yarn's a bit thicker. The yarn is Aslan Trends in Santa Fe. That's how the yarn looks. Again, I had two balls of this because they come in 50 gram balls. And the um, design itself is pretty easy. It's a free pattern. Um, so that's how the back looks. So if you want to see how it knits in stock in it. So again, these are a 56 si stitch sock. And yeah, so it's just two by two ribbing but then you alternate every six rows so I thought I'd do those for the Victorian Studios um, Harry Potter cow I was going to call it the Weasley cow so loving those and I'm almost up to the point where I can add a heel into those ones and I think I'll do a flegal heel for this one surprise surprise next I'm going to show you some products that I um, cast on in March I had originally cast these on for the shawl and sweater cal cal by pen hook and needles and obviously I didn't finish them because I was only knitting them um, in short bursts so the first one is in my owl bag from fat squirrel fibers I love it this is my Ravenclaw shawl um, Ravenclaw cardigan now the Ravenclaw cardigan came about because it's sort of the movie version of the Ravenclaw colors because Ravenclaw is different colors in the books um, and I wanted to use up all my scraps of Bendigo woolen mills. I would show you full skeins if I had any left of these, but these are all I've got left. So this is Aztec and that's Ghost. And so far I have knit the whole sweater, or the whole cardigan as we say here in Australia. The arms are way too, like, big. I probably should have decreased sooner but what can I I'm gonna wear it around the house so all I did was stripe the blue with all the greys that I had so that's charcoal slate I think grey and ghost and the stripes I just followed the Fibonacci sequence as you guys know I love using the Fibonacci sequence for stripes and the stripes on the arms match the body of the sweater exactly and then I decided to bind off in the blue so that's how it looks like I haven't done um, I haven't sewn in the ends obviously for the arms that's and I haven't put the band on yet for the front so hopefully those that those two yarns will be enough um, to put a band on but I'm pretty happy with this one I'm impressed that I did it this is my second sweater um, and for the next one I have so many sweaters in mind that I have to do I would love to do a fingering weight sweater but I'm a big girl and I don't want to spend 17 years knitting a, um, a cardigan so it'll probably be another DK one but really happy with that so just loving it so I bound off at the bottom with that as well I think originally I didn't bind off with the blue so I undid the binding of the bottom and I just added the blue then so love it and the um, needles I was using I think she recommends 
So this is a Mama Vertebrae pattern by Kelly Brooker, but I think she changed her surname now. Um, I think she recommended fours for DK, but I used, in order to get gauge, I used four and a half. But I can't wait to wear that one, so it's very exciting. When you're a big girl and you make a sweater, it's very exciting. Yeah, so I cast on the sweater and I thought, and I'm going to cast on a shawl as well. But since then, everybody seems to be casting on this shawl. Um, what Shara made, Shara from What Shara made, and I think Yarngasm has cast it on as well. It's in my field supply bag, which I love. Eh, it's, it is overpriced, but they had me at Vichetta. I'm a Louis Vuitton girl, so when I see raw leather, I just love it. And the yarn I'm using is Madeline Tosh, in, Madeline Tosh Light in Antler, Well Water, Ink and Thunderstorm. So this is ink, my second ball of ink. And I do need to wash this. I had already washed the other ink because I'd used partly for another project. Um, when I was knitting with this the first time around, it, um, the colour um, bled onto my hands and basically made my hands blue. So I do have to wash this second again before I um, start knitting with it. Now, as you guys know, I always like to learn new stuff. And for this one, I learned the, you know, the crochet cast on or the magic loop cast on. I think I did it awesomely and it was so easy. I just um, looked at uh, YouTube and yeah, so you cast on in a circle. And it's a paid for pattern by Stephen West and it's the eyeball shawl, but I call it the Mad Eye Moody shawl. So that's the eye there. The eye is slightly different because I want to use make it like a Nazar Bonjuk, you know, a blue, blue evil eye um, charm that you see in Turkey and Greece. So that's how I did the eye, because otherwise this colour here, this the black would be slightly bigger and it's only another colour here as well um, because that's supposed to be the whole pupil and the next bit is supposed to be white because it's supposed to look like an eye but I just wanted to do it in blue so it's really easy to follow I haven't started the brioche yet obviously but there's something about this shawl can I tell you I have what have I got I've got something wrong going here I can't remember why I put the stitch marker and where those two stitch markers are it's like as if something's cut the thread so I don't know if I split the thread or whatever and I'm not gonna rip all of this out to get down to there so I'm gonna teach myself how to repair a hole and I'm just going to hopefully close the gap somehow I might even film it to see it just just see how it goes but I always say things like that and I'm such a crap podcaster that I never do and then I've got a stitch marker here I have no idea what it is I'm sure I'll find out when I take off I'm assuming that's another problem area so as you can see lots of problem areas but I love the colors I chose um, yeah so that's my Stephen West eyeball shawl cool and it's really easy to knit so um, if you've been debating whether you want to do it or not I would recommend that you do it because it is a nice shawl to knit it's different from others it's a different shape from other shawls you get to learn some brioche you get to learn that cast you know you have to use that cast on you might already know it but I didn't know it and I always try to learn something new with um, the patterns I pick up so yeah so might as well well I can't show you the whole of this this is in my what is it called my official sock knitter bag I couldn't resist with some foxes from little skein in the big wool back when our dollar was okay that we could order stuff from overseas but this is a design that I am creating design that I'm creating the yarn I'm using is carnival this is skein sock um, BFL and again love that color I'll just show you the back of it so you know as I'm knitting it you can see and I wanted to show you something as well so this is the back of it and this is what you get when you knit with hand dyed yarn 
as you can see, because I'm pulling from the inside and the outside of the ball, and so you can see there's a significant difference in colour. This doesn't bother me because it's hand dyed yarn. Um, what you've got to understand with hand dyed yarn and how they build the skein, and um, so Kristen from Skein actually explained it well in her um, podcast, but in case you don't uh, watch her, but I don't know why you don't watch her, you should. Let me just pull this out and I'll explain this later. So when they're dying, so it's in the pot like this or crumpled up or whatever like this. So imagine you're looking down on the pot. And so they're putting all the colours here and that's fine. And then they turn it over and they put the colours on here. But what happens is that you, they can't always flip it inside and out like that to get all the colours. So what you'll get is that difference from the outside of the yarn to the inside of the yarn. Because even though they flip it over, it doesn't always get into the inside of the skein as well. And that's why you get the difference in um, from the beginning of the yarn to the end of the yarn on... Um, hand dyed yarn sometimes. It doesn't always happen, we all know that, but it does sometimes happen and that's why it happens. So if you are don't like that sort of stuff, I suggest you don't make socks out of the yarn and maybe just stick to shawls or something like that because that way you'll get, um, it'll just be a gradation and that's also probably something that you need to be aware of when you're um, using hand dyed yarn for um, cardigans or some sort of garment so that the colours don't look weird make sure that um, if you're alternating skeins that you're alternating from the same end of um, the skein when you make it into a ball so that even though the colour might be graduating you're using two balls where it starts at dark and then goes light so just be aware of that as well so that's my design I'm fairly excited about it. Um, it's called, oh, I can give you my, the name of it, it's called the Buckbeak Socks. Of course, based on Harry Potter, and I think the design reminds me of Buckbeak. So. <sighs> I've got a trolley here of stuff because I'm, when it, I bought myself an IKEA Ragnock or something trolley, and um, it just feels so more adult and um, organized. Like I said, my middle tier has um, a whole bunch of yarn, which I didn't tell you. Um, not yarn, but projects, but I'm not going to show you those because they're in sort of timeout, so you don't need to th see those. Next, I told you there's a lot of whips. In my Big Bang Theory um, Bling Your String Bag, I have another pair of socks. Surprise, surprise. These socks are just a plain vanilla sock um, and I'm knitting from a um, sock blank that I dyed with my nephews. So um, I don't know if it, it might have been even cup day. I went over to my sister's and we were, uh, maybe my parents, my sister lives next door almost. Um, and I got my nephews over, one declined. But the other nephew came over and we d d dyed some sock blanks. I ended up using food colouring because I didn't want the hassle of worrying about safety for, for the boys. And with the leftover dyes, I didn't want to waste them. So I had a spare um, sock blank. And so I just put it, you know, just oversaturated the sock blank. And what I did was on the sock blank, I coloured this part like a big stripe down. Because I knew that if I did that, I'd get some sort of um, micro stripes happening. And all I've done is chopped in the middle, because I like to do two at a time. And this is a um, single skein, single thread sock blank. And I like to knit two, so I just split them into two and I'm knitting them. The toes and heels I'll be using, or I have used with Regia. Again, Turkish cast on and yeah so that's how my little micro stripes are going I'm really happy with how it came up so yeah it's pretty cool I love it the charm is by um, an Etsy seller it is my le it's a lemon sort of lemon meringue cupcake and it's by this seller here 
Okay, so that's another pair of socks. And those charms really um, inexpensive compared to some of the charms that I've seen. And even in your Australia, you don't have to pay a billion dollars in postage from overseas. Next. Okie dokie. And what's this? It looks too big for socks yes it's too big for socks I have no idea who the designer oh yes I do the designer of this bag is not on there it just says made in Melbourne I got this from Morrison Sons it was extremely reasonable price I think it was in the 30s and um, but the, they don't sell them anymore and I tried to contact the maker of it because I had the email and he or she never responded so Oh well, because I wanted more. So this is my Hui Hui Shell by Hohi Locatelli. I've got her book, Authentic Something. And um, yeah, so everybody um, is knitting. There's a shawl that everybody seems to be knitting. Starts with a P, like please, or I don't know. But I like this one. This is a Hui Hui shawl, J-U-J-U-Y. And yeah, so I've cast on that using the needles as recommended, which obviously I don't remember what they are. So this is where I'm up to. But the yarn I first saw I'm using is Debbie Bliss Fine Donegal Tweed. Fine Do they're the colours that I'm using. So a cream, like a dusky pink, and a deep purple-ish colour. So that's the colour. I think the colours are nice. So like I said, this is a Donegal, so it's been interesting to knit in a four four ply. Um, but that's how far I've gotten so far. So far, so good, so easy. Um, I'm still up to the increases, but no matter what I do, I can never make this looser than what I'm after because it's a garter tab um, cast on. And I've been doing like yarn overs um, that I've just been just taking out just so I can, they can, it can be stretchy. And it's still not stretchy enough. So I don't know if I'm going to cast this on again or I'm just going to continue knitting. So I'll think about in and make a decision in the next couple of weeks although again I did want to finish this one so I could wear it on my birthday but given that my birthday runs for two months because that's the person I am because it's all about me so I think that's all I'll show you for my week so I'm sure that if you're still watching you're probably still well you're crazy because I keep on just showing you socks it's just insane and I will be continuing on the cast on party because there is um two or three pairs of socks that I want to cast on I also want to cast on another shawl so and I enjoy casting on and I like the diversity um, I'm really missing not being able to cross stitch at the moment because I can't really work like that and that's how I this is how I work I look down when I'm cross stitching I can't cross stitch up here and I'm really missing that so I need the diversity of all these different projects and I am a Gemini so Geminis are a bit two-faced dare I say and well we like diversity so <sighs> so I will show you some of my purchases that aren't related to the wool, to the wool gathering, gathering I'll show you them first and then I'll talk about the wool gathering and also show you my purchases as I go along that I got from the retreat so the first purchase that I've made was the Fun in the Wo Woman Cave 217. This is their five-year celebration for Pen, Hook and Needles podcast. And um, this is Fun, he's a chameleon. And they did this for their autism awareness um, that they do every year for just awareness to bring awareness to people on the autism spectrum and I decided I want to do it. The bag, see I taped all this, I filmed all this when I actually opened the bag but do I put it on Instagram? No. The bag itself is made by the Silver Shed USA which means that I've, how cool is the inside? 
that's awesome it's crocheted because the women do love a bit of a crochet so in the bag itself because I'm sure everybody's got it now because it wasn't 10 million of them you, you get the pattern for the chameleon obviously you get the bag itself and you could choose two sizes you get the yarn and Malisha did such a good job this is I just love it it's a DK but look at the colors they just come up so well and like it's not muddy at all it's just fantastic and it's 75% superwash 25% nylon and it's their five-year anniversary color but oh sorry it's a sport not a DK and it's just awesome and people are making the chameleon out of it obviously but I think I want these on my feet I want this on my feet so that's probably what I'm going to do my leash will probably have a heart attack and then it came with some teas and some skittles which was awesome and some balloons and um, a card and nice message and a tape measure that's like a little teapot how cute is that love it looking forward to using all of that and finally photographing it and putting it up on um, Ravelry and next I made a purchase from Lovebird Lane um, I think she used to be, her yarn used to be called My Muddlings but and she has a um, in, um, a YouTube podcast called the My Muddlings Podcast but so this is her new name and she was I wanted to try her yarn out so I got two of her mini skeins so this mini skein is a variegated mini skein how nice are those colours I especially like this one because it's flame trees which is all so you guys would know if you're not Aussie you'd know the sun flame trees and this is her tonal colourway and I, was, I can't decide if I'm going to make like socks out of these like alternate skeins between the tonal and the variegated or whether I'm going to put it in my blanket honestly I'll probably do both so but I love them they feel really nice I have taken them out and had a little bit Play, play with them and then I was watching the knitting in stitches podcast and she showed these bags now I have no jokes I probably have like I can't even so imagine this hand and that big I probably have about 10 of those of fabric that I can make into bags and I will be making into bags and I'll talk about that in another podcast um, but I can never resist a good bag maker or a cool bag maker and this bag maker is Crochet One Knit Two, and she's on Etsy. And really cool to find out that she is an Aussie expat. So I got some bags from her. Um, she didn't have um, Australia as a shipping address, but she kindly changed them for me. So she's from Canada, and I bought these three bags because when you see them, how can I? How could I resist? So the first one is Stormtroopers love it and I got the needle thing needle thing the needle cozy I can't resist it because it was matching I rarely use DPNs but I, I suppose I do use DPNs for things other than socks but I do use them for socks too but I always just associate these for socks so I've got Stormtroopers I've got Hermione because she is cool and we would still be under the um, of Voldemort if it wasn't for her and I did get a a needle cozy for this one too I don't know where I put it should I put it inside here oh it's somewhere but anyway it's a needle cozy and the last one I got was a Star Trek Next Generation I love it and who did I meet from this one ah oh, yes I met Ms Crosby and at a Star Trek convention, yes, I've been to Star Trek conventions. But I used to love Riker. I so had the hearts for him. But of course now we love Sir Pat Stew.
and she also gave me a free she donated a pack oh, well free she donated a bag to the podcast and um yeah so this will be part of my birthday cow giveaway thank you so much lovely i really appreciate it i don't really get donations on this channel which i don't mind it's it's not why i do it i'm happy to pay my own way but it was very generous of it and it's pencils i just love it and it's just a plain blue on the inside but it's huge like you could do a you could well it's, it's socks but you could do a two ball shawl in this one easy piece of Japanese. i love it so thank you lovely so we're finally on um the wool gathering so i'll go through the rest of the stash um, as I talk about the wool gathering, if you're not aware, the wool gathering is a retreat that's um, held here in Australia, in Victoria. Um, this was their inaugural event and it was so enjoyable. Now I understand why people go to wool retreats um, or knitting retreats overseas. It was fantastic um, to get a whole bunch of introverts together and we all couldn't stop talking. Um, yeah, so... Um, I can be socially awkward and not that my friends wouldn't see that my friends would say can you can you stop talking but um, and it was a bit like that um, during the weekend and every time I was driving back to my motel was, you know the inner dialogue oh my god can you just stop talking so everybody else can have a chance like this was my inner dialogue but so I drove up on the Thursday so I went on my own so again scary for an um, introvert drove up on the Thursday it's about a two-hour drive bloody awful drive because um, I think I've passed about 20 roadworks on the freeway on the freeway and at one stage uh, two or three stages I was driving at 40 k's it's like oh my god um, but thankfully with the hire car that I had from the accident um, that also had cruise control so it was all good so we drove up, um, obviously checked in, went to registration and at registration um, they gave us a gift bag, which have I done? They gave us um, a, like a retreat bag with, um, which is here I should say, so we just got to choose one. And this bag is made by Bonnie and Kate, you can find them on Instagram for now. So a lovely bag, beautifully um, stitched bag, and inside we had some goodies, and I'll go through the goodies. So we we got the standard stuff like you know we got our um, our timetable information, all that sort of stuff. You know, eating, toilets, blah 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 blah. We also got um, a little book, and you can do your patterns. So the knitting it's a it's a grid, but it's a knitting grid, which is awesome because knitting. The shapes of, for knitting is different than a standard square so that was awesome we also got um, two patterns one from briny knits and one from one from briny knits so that was her patience shawl these have just got the coupon codes and this is from is she sally revels or maybe it's sally oakley and this is the rose neath eight ply beanie so we got codes for that we got a little bag a notions bag which I loved and you got stitch markers I'm already using one of the stitch markers and they're down here somewhere and we got some more stitch markers with the little sheepy which is basically the thing like he was our little logo or she and then we got a whole bunch of yarns I'll go through yarns, some pens, colour pencils some soap and a discount from I can't read the manufacturer's name but we also got a discount code Some buttons from Button Mania. Um, it's washi tape. I'm assuming it's washi tape. And I think we've got some other. Oh, we got a code from a discount code from Circus Tony Can Made. So the we got a whole bunch of samples, which was cool. This is oyster yarn. I'm not sure what the weight is, but so 
So we've got a sample of Oyster Yarn. It's getting darker, I've got to be quick. Um, white Gum Wool. These are some wool and fabric because one of the classes was wool and embroidery. So the colours are nice enough that I could do something floral, which I liked. I liked it with something different. Um, we got some 100% Polworth from the farm. So the wool gathering retreat was actually held at a farm, which is a working farm. They make their own wool. They, I think they invented or developed the Polworth sheep. So we got some of that, which was awesome for colour work. Circus Tonic Handmade. I love it because this is not normally a colour I would purchase. And that's about it for the kit. So we registered and then we had um, a little meeting, sort of wool gathering, you know, wel welcoming everybody um, and welcoming, um, just introducing all the teachers and the owners of the farm. So the farm is a working farm, so they still shear their sheep and they make, they actually um, make wool as well and sell their own wool and it's just a beautiful farm homestead whatever you want to call it I was just spewing that I wasn't actually staying on the farm because some people who were quick enough were staying at the farm I was staying um, down the road um, in Colac which is probably about a 10 minute drive um, probably next time I would stay in Birigara, um just for a change but it was it was actually like even though I was spewing that I wasn't staying at one of the homesteads it was actually nice to be on my own and to arrive and leave when I wanted to and just basically veg out when I got back to my room so I did like that aspect of it well given that I live on my own that's probably why next um, so the next day um, so breakfast you had to find on your own um, but we immediately went into our classes so the first class I did was um, a spinning class with Janet Nope. And I wanted to do the spinning class because I want to see if I like spinning. And because um, I want to get an Ashford e spinner. And I have to admit, I really enjoyed spinning. So this is my dodgy single ply. And we're all spinning off the grease. So we're all spinning off. We're spinning off raw wool. So good. So the lanolin is still there. There's no veg matter that I can see so just beautiful well this is Corridale and um, yeah it was just so much fun I took some wool home with me just to have a bit of fun and see how it feels um, really enjoyed her class I got to use a Maja Craft Susie is it Susie professional Susie professional I could be wrong what a beautiful wheel to spin with but um, yeah, I think I'll go with the e-spinner, given that I had, I've had so many problems with my neck that I like the idea of um, being able to, you know, just fashion something that's higher or lower because the e-spinner is quite small, higher or lower, depending on how comfortable it is for me um, when I want to spin. So that's something to save up for because my car was totaled. Did I tell you that? My car was totaled and that's purely because... Um, there was damage to the body and I had purchased that when she was an embryo and I had to wait for her to be born and um, so I've had her since 2005 so it was extremely difficult for me to let go of her um, I've got a hire car at the moment and they're just going to give me like two cents for um, to the insurance company to pay the car out and it was just like god like, I, I really miss her. Nobody liked her because she's a manual car and nobody likes driving a manual. But I loved her. I loved her. I, um, yeah, she was my baby. What can I say? I don't have any living creatures because I'm not home alone, home enough to look after living creatures. So we had the spinning class. Then we had lunch. And then some people went off to do the walk, um, which was a, a farm tour that they had um, to be familiar with the farm. I was scheduled for the Saturday, so I didn't go obviously on the Friday. We had dinner, lo lots of laugh, people were knitting and we were chatting. And on the Friday night, I had organized, 
well I had organized this mini swap and Karen had organized um, for it to be done on the Friday so it was really a lot of fun to actually get rid of a lot of my yarns and um, give them all and I got some yarns and replaced them. Now my mini skeins were anywhere between 2 and 10, 10 grams but some cool person she brought along some undyed ones which I am going to, Jen, I'm going to put these to use if you're watching. And then, yeah, so just some beautiful swappy yarns. If I saw green, I tried to take it because that's my favourite colour. I love this one, looks like hand spun. So cool. And nobody was loving this one for some reason. Love it. And that one loved it and um, so much fun and I'm already gonna start to as I as I finish projects I'll start to make some more mini skeins as well just to make life a lot easier for next year because I'm definitely gonna go next year so that was Friday so on Saturday on Saturday I had booked in for the sock knitting class with Claire Devine so I was a bit fangirly so awesome to be in class with her and have her as a teacher my class was creating socks that fit now i make a lot of socks so but i one i want to take a class with claire although i was spewing because there was a salary weaving class that i would have loved to go on to as well um but i wanted the class with claire and this seemed like the most appropriate class because no matter how what you do you can always learn something and I felt that I can learn something from the socks class and I did and there was so much fun and again apologies to anybody if I spoke too much and we got to start knitting like she helped us start knitting um, a favorite heel because we measured our feet and calves and ankles and insteps and then she talked about what there was a um, some sort of um, study and they were looking at um, you know the foot base to the instep ratio and all that sort of stuff and what I found out was that whatever the average number was it was 10% and my one was 20% which means that my instep was 20% bigger which is significant because I don't think anybody had that everybody else was around the 10% so that goes to show you how big or how wide my instep is and it runs in the family we all had even when I was thinner um, we all had problems putting on certain types of shoes and boots because we just couldn't get it around the heel section to pull the boot on. So that was my class and I did post a picture of me and Claire on the Instagrams because apparently that's what you do, you post everything on Instagram. And then we had lunch again, fabulous. Karen did a wonderful job and the caterer did a wonderful job catering to everybody's needs like if you're gluten free, vegetarian, vegan, normal um, gluten free but also fructose free so you couldn't eat um, like onions so much fun the only thing I missed I reckon during the four days was fruit and that's probably one of the things can we have a fruit bowl sort of thing but it was fantastic really enjoyed it there was enough food that you can go back for seconds I asked for the vegetarian just because in my head it's easier than saying I don't eat this meat and I don't eat that meat and blah 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 so I always just say that I'm vegetarian those sorts of occasions so it was really good the food was phenomenal loved it and then in the afternoon there was the market I was extremely excited I decided not to go to the farm tour my leg was hurting I just thought no I don't want to spend an hour and a half in the cold um, which was good because then I could go to the market because they sort of clashed and um, I got to see Sharon again and sorry Sharon I didn't get to speak to you long like we were there for like two seconds together and then I don't know we parted ways it was so squashed in the market and because um, I would have loved to have sat down with you and had a coffee and had a proper chat basically but I'm sorry I did that to you extremely extremely sorry but nevertheless I did do some shopping the first thing that um, I had was um, we had the the release of a new yarn which is um, a collaboration between Tandy the farm and also um, Great Ocean Road woolen mills and this is a new yarn it's called the Henry I bought two of them this is two I think it was two skeins of alpaca 
and no so two plies of alpaca and one ply of polworth it's nice doesn't smell too sheepy which I wouldn't mind if I if it did smell sheepy but I loved it and like they started it cast on a scarf that everybody can um, knit on so God knows how long that scarf is gonna be so I bought two skeins of that because you can't just buy one it's just wrong two skeins of that from the Tandy shop I bought some Polworth wool tops just because I want to spend money let's be let's be honest um, and I bought some other Tandy wool so and because I want to do some color work so I just bought a sage and a light green and a brown which is actually natural color and then I bought this one which is actually the dark brown but it's indigo dyed and this is DK 175 meters but doesn't it look cool and even though they're different weights but look so cool and then I did buy some other smaller skeins for color work so I bought some of the natural taupe and I think I bought a white but I have no idea what I did with it so it's just somewhere and then I went to White Gum Wool, um, the White Gum Wool stand because I asked her to bring one of them. So I asked Sally, can, can you bring one of them? And crinkling is goodness, people. So she did. This is a five ply um, wildflower print shade 18 um, uh, silk merino base. And White Gum Wool is, um, they sell ethical wool. And I don't know if that colour is true to colour, but it's just, you guys know, they had me at Chetrus. And then I bought some of her 8-ply, and again, this is the Ethical Superfine Merino Tasmanian, from the Tasmanian Midlands, so I bought a mustard, a brown, a natural, and I bought a four ply because she didn't have any eight ply in. Of course. It's got to be purchased. And this is 100% as well, I'm pretty sure. 100%. Yeah. But. Yeah, I think they all go together. I don't, I don't know. In my head, I've got, you know. It all stuck in my head whether I wanted, I wanted to do colour work. But. These three, I think, go together, and I reckon they'd make an awesome shawl too. Love it. Then I went to the pearl box stand because you do that. You know, you how you do that. We all do it. The one swoop around, and I bought two yarns from there as well. And this is oyster yarns on their Maven base. Maven, and this is. 65% superwash merino, 20% silk, 15% yak and it's 400 meters to 100 grams and it's 120 grams skein or oh, I don't know if it's 120 grams skein but this color is Aquarius and this color is um, honey and how can you walk away from that and it's single ply and it's just squishy and it feels good and I have to find a something to knit with this which will be no problem at all because this is gonna just look magnificent in any pattern they were actually so stunning I just loved it and I saw this pattern that somebody from the pearl box I think or oyster yarns posted and it was the minaret shawl oh my god I think it's called the minarets and lace shawl and they made it in lace but I'll make it in four ply but oh that would be awesome. I have to see the meter each. Yeah, so that was the market. It got a bit rainy. We got a bit tired. We had dinner. Then we had some giveaways. Three girls near me won. Bitches. So it was Joe and Nat and Kylie. They all won some beautiful yarns. And it's my birthday and nobody gave me anything. Just saying. Just saying. It should be all about me. It's May. All about me. 
anyway. Then a bunch, a bunch of us was, were knitting in the evening and I found that um, Bonnie, the Bonnie and Kate girls hadn't sold one of their bags. So I said, show it to me and I couldn't resist. Just beautiful. It's got Japanese fabric, not Japanese, just Japanese style, but Japanese fabric. And I can't resist fabric drawstrings. There's something awesome about them. I know how much effort it takes to make these bags. So I just love it. It's huge. I've actually put another shawl that I'm about to cast on in them, but they make a beautiful bag. So loving that. So that was Saturday. And then on Sunday, um, I had my dyeing class again, a bit fangirly. And that class was with Bryony from Gradient Oz and Bryony Knits. And we did some gradient dyeing. Can I say it was so much fun. It never occurred to me to do it, do gradients that way. So she used, so she created um, basically a tube, like a sock blank, but in a tube, um, you know, loosely plied. And she created all these sock blanks and then we got to basically go feral on them and do whatever colours we want. So I did. And like she's a great teacher and she's just really personable as well and just you know you can just talk to her and chat to her and I'm sure she th thought I was a dick but you know whatever so this is these are the colors I made so this is on eight ply and um, so it's a dusky rose here and it deepens into a like a brown so this was dusk and this is wallaby in landscape dyes and I love that the second one I did didn't come out exactly how I thought because um, we actually died on the Polworth. I know it was sacrilege, but we died on the Polworth, and because it's not a superwash yarn, it's it's not as bright as um, it wouldn't. It doesn't soak up like a superwash does. That's you know if you're not familiar. So this is just a darker. Like I think I even had black there at one stage, but that's supposed to be like a, a red, and and it just comes out to. I suppose a peach or apricot this is not my colors at all I thought about um, over dyeing it but I thought no it's actually a memory from um, from the retreat and I think it'll look great in color work so I mean I think that'll look good and even if I did it in that I just think it looks awesome so left that so they, those two are in eight ply and the last one we did 50 grams so they're all 50 gram um, blanks and the last one of course I've got to do the chartreuse so that's in a four ply so it goes I don't know because I rolled all these up so I took them out of the blanks and that's my last one I love it so I think I can't even remember the color way oh lichen landscape days dyes lichen and this is just a mishmash of granite and karawara and yeah, I just, we're supposed to play, so why not? So that was a fabulous class. And then we had like, you know, we had snacks like cheese and biscuits and um, biscuits, by the way, if you're overseas, we call bi cookies biscuits. We call biscuits scones. That's we all speak English, but we all speak different languages. So, love it as well. So we had lunch and then, you know, nobody wanted to leave, but we finally left. And I got to drive um, Kylie um, and drop her off somewhere. So she's traveling along on Instagram. And OLVS, I think, on Ravelry. Yeah, so, um, and the drive went so much quicker. I kept on saying, did it? Was this a quick drive? Was this a quick drive? Did you wait? like, I just couldn't believe how quick it went when there was somebody else in the car. And I know that because it was a Sunday, sorry, I'm playing with my hair. I know because it was a Sunday, they didn't have the roadworks that they had on the Thursday afternoon when I was driving, but it just went so much quicker. So overall, I would give the Wool Gathering Retreat two thumbs up. Um, as I said to Karen, and I don't know if I've already said this, but as I said to Karen, um, I won't fill in the survey that like I didn't want to fill in the survey that day but I, I was happy to fill in I said I'll send you an email after I've absorbed it all 
Um, but when I was talking to her, I said, you need to understand that if you didn't make any changes, I would still be happy and I would recommend it to anyone. So that's, that's how I viewed the retreat. For a retreat, it was fantastic. For an inaugural retreat, it was out of... Oh, just so good. Like, the fact... I mean, I... I don't know if any other people had problems with the food, but I don't think that anybody else would have had problems with the classes and that sort of stuff. You know, there was one thing where um, the farm tour clashed with the market, and I think those people didn't get enough chance to shop. And then also, because the market was open to everyone, I just think that maybe we could have had a half an hour where we could have shopped before it was open to the public. I think that might have been a good idea. And the room where they were selling was quite dark. Um, so you couldn't see the colours properly. And um, Janet Noop, who I did the spinning class with, she does my spin on things. And she had these beautiful yarns with her. And she doesn't have them on her website. And they were just beautiful dyed yarns. But I couldn't see the colours. And I, I just didn't want to keep on going inside and outside trying to see what the colour is. Um, I probably should have spoken to her later and said, can I just have a look at the yarns, you know, after the market officially closed so I can just easily take them outside to look at the colours because like I'll pick up a yarn and then I sort of went outside the door to get a bit of natural light and it'd be one colour and it would look different in the natural light so a brown might look like a green both of the colours I would like but if I'm trying to match colours up yeah it just wasn't working for me but um, I would love to do another class with her so I think the wool gathering is also augering some or, organizing some wine wool and wine Sundays so I might put my name down for one of those I definitely won't want to do a sari weaving class the woman that was teaching us who I think her website's called dying for weaving die for weaving or dying for weaving she was just beautiful she was just yeah I think weaving is my calling but the idea of paying for um, a loom just it's not going to happen but I'd love to do a class with her I just think that would be awesome I think I definitely think weaving is my calling kind of like how I think I should have been a dentist I'm not a dentist nowhere near it um, but yeah so I just and Sue one of the teachers she had a color color work class and I saw somebody doing her hat and like I've immediately gone on Ravelry and like I'm trying to like buy it and you can't buy it because she only gives it in the class and I begged her, I was, please, please give me the pattern or you know something please and she goes, you have to understand it's not a pattern, it's just like you know and you mix and match, so I don't care, I just want to please and she gave it to me which was really nice. I think some people might have thought that I talk a lot which I did so that's, some people might have thought I was a bit of an idiot because I think at one stage when the market, because the market opened slightly late and I'm there just going, let me spend my money, somebody let me spend my money, open the market, I want to spend my money. <laughs> like I'm just walking around doing that. But um, yeah, the coffee was beautiful. So um, Tom made a beautiful coffee and he made a, made a great hot chocolate as well, which is extremely important for, you know, us. Um, they always had just like instant coffee, tea and biscuits going. So you're never hungry. You know, they always had water. It's so you could keep constantly hydrated. You can walk around in the farm as long as you, you know, if the, if the gates open, leave it open. If the gates close, close the gate, um, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, so that was just, it was just really nice to be like, you sort of, um, welcomed into somebody's home and homestead and I know it's a business but it was still really lovely and had a homey atmosphere because you know Tom the owner was there his parents were there and they live on the farm so it was just fantastic like that so I really enjoyed it and it will be at the um, it will be at Tandy next year as well so I do so anybody who was on the fence I do recommend it and it was pricey that's probably the biggest hurdle because not only are you paying for the retreat then you're also paying for um, um, accommodation as well but I mean if you put a few dollars away between now and then I think um, you know think about it so it's going to be the first week of May um, she'll probably take the first deposit in November so just if you can start saving I mean but again, I know that for a lot of people that's out of reach. I mean, I would love to organize a retreat, but just like a really simple one, maybe almost like an overnight one. So it's just two days, um, you know, minimal 
money or maybe even not as such a retreat as just where people can just get together chat and knit you know and maybe have just one class you know just something but there's a lot of organizing and like I said Karen did well and um yeah hopefully there'll be more retreats around the country so looking forward to it did I tell you like people came from New Zealand and Brisbane and Adelaide and Sydney and Tasmania and Canberra and gorgeous Kai came from Canberra on her own she drove for eight hours she's not 19 just this community I've learned is awesome um, like that fiber craft community whether it's cross stitch or knitting or crochet or spinning or you know weaving they're just we're just awesome people that's all I've got to say um, quickly I might add a um, couple of podcasts that I've been enjoying for a long time but or recently and the first one is the pen hook and needles podcast they are so totally opposite the type of person I come across as they're like nicely spoken just sweet women um, I love it how when they're, they're going oh how many whips do you have and there's this pause and they're just counting it and they do it for every episode I just think it's hilarious I love it um, so I'm really enjoying them and you know with Marlisha and Talia and then the other one is, I think it's called the Knitting Party Podcast. Um, let me have a look. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to be able to tell. I think it's the Knitter's Party or the Knitting Party Podcast. Knitting Party Podcast. I just love it. She, like, she starts off with beer. So she has like a beer tasting awesome like she's been she was I think filming in Egypt once and then she was filming in the US and now with her partner they're living in um, London for six months she hasn't posted in maybe a month ago she posted a month ago so I'm hoping she posts soon because I really really enjoy her videos I think she's so bubbly and so vivacious just love it so there's yeah so the knitters party podcast and the pen hook and needles podcast um, I really do recommend them and of course I mean there's a lot of odd Aussie podcasts that I love too and I think I might just go through some of my favorite Aussie podcasts next time I film the next time I film will hopefully be will probably be in a couple of weeks time after would it be after if it's not after I'll film in a couple of weeks time I think or maybe I'll film next week or maybe I'll film in three years time who knows because that's how I roll but I will be going to the Hand Knitters Market at Coburg Town Hall on, I think it's after my birthday. Or is it the 21st? I don't know. Everything's in relation to my birthday in May. So, um, but if you're going, let me know. We'll, I'll be definitely going. And some of the girls from the Knitting Retreat will be going as well. Um, we'll be there when the doors open. Let us in Zebra's my mother! Anyway, <laughs> I all hope that you're all doing well um, and I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Ciao.